Hi, I'm George Cow, and I'm here today with creativity coach Cheryl Taves. She is one of my clients. I'm grateful to be able to work with her, and she, uh, we're going to have a conversation today about creativity, the process of creativity, uh, how that relates to entrepreneurship. I think you're going to enjoy this conversation, and hi, Cheryl. Great to have you here. Hi, George. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a real honor to be able to talk to you and, and to your uh, audience yeah and, yeah experience what it's like to be seen <laughs> oh yes yes yeah we'll, we'll definitely talk about how that because i know a lot of uh, those watching can um you know are starting out with their content mm -hmm. and getting this uh experience of what it's like to share um, authentically vulnerably being themselves so but before we go on i want to make sure people have a sense of your background so let me just read your bio out and sure then, and then we can start the conversation here. So Cheryl Taves is a visual artist and creativity coach who's passionate about helping artists to strengthen their, cre their creative resiliency so that they can deepen their connection to their work and produce the most authentic and personal art. And I'm gonna be sure to link uh, the page for your, both your creativity coaching, but also your, your art, if that's okay. Oh, that'd be wonderful, yes. I think yes. it's wonderful for people to see your art because you're actually in the work. Um, so finishing your bio here, Cheryl's coaching focuses on the creative process and how to navigate the challenges and manage the emotional labor that often accompanies the making of art. Through her business, Insight Creative, she offers one-to-one -one coaching as well as a 12-week online group coaching program. I'm excited about that. It's called The Artist's Mindset, and it's going to be available actually in the next month or two, so really cool. Um, I will make sure that there's links to your website and Facebook pages. You can get a, a free copy, those watching, if you go to uh, her website and sign up for her email newsletter, you'll get a free copy of the PDF of uh, how to make a creativity journal. So Cheryl, great to have you here. Thank you, George. And, um, let's, let's, have this, let's start talking about this here. This, sure. This feeling of when we, well, you know, as I talk to the audience a lot about is the importance of authentic content. Um, and of course, one of the most important or one of the most authentic ways of creating content is being on video, especially on a uh, video that isn't edited, just like this one that we're on. So tell, tell me about how you, tell us about how you feel about that and you are just getting into the video part of things. Uh, yes, but, uh, I'd love for you to share and then come come to it from a from a creativity coach point of view as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, um, I think one of the biggest uh, noticings that I have right now um, for myself is I'm I'm uncomfortable. Mm. You know, this isn't natural for me. And I know you and I've talked a lot about this because you've had a lot of experience and you expressed how you were uncomfortable in the beginning, you know, hearing yourself, seeing yourself. And also just being seen, you know, being out there in the in the world and in social media and having that exposure. So it's it goes against a lot of my natural instincts, which, you know, from a very early age, I was a shy child, quite introverted. Most of my life, I've been able to kind of be a behind the scenes supporter type person. And as an introvert, I love one to one relationships. So in a way, this is really cool because I feel like I'm just talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's what I do in my mind. I go, I'm just talking to George. I talk to George all the time. This is what I'm doing. So, one of the things that I do with my clients as we talk about um, mindset is to recognize, you know, be that observer of what's happening, the internal dialogue that's going on, and when the discomfort arises, you know, to really just um, allow that to be, to not force it away or reject it or judge it or condemn it, but to recognize it's just a natural occurrence, you know, as we're traveling into that unknown place, into the things that we haven't experienced before, which is very much like making art and the creative process. So I want to talk a little bit more about that connection down the road here. But so in this moment, I'm just having to really um, notice the thoughts that are coming and then reframe them. Um, recontextualize them for myself and even just speaking about it like I'm doing with you right now helps me to be honest and authentic and say you know I'm a little uncomfortable I'm uncomfortable having you know being on camera but if I can diffuse that and, and have a different kind of energy meet it with a different kind of energy uh, more gentleness authenticity mm -hmm. then it becomes um, 
more manageable for me. And then I can actually step more fully into my potential instead of, you know, holding myself back from what I can do. And it's been a limiting, you know, it's been something that's limited me for a long time in my life, I'll be honest. And so in the last five years, um, as I've been working as a creativity coach, I've been really growing more fully into that and recognizing it started very early on with my art making. I was having a lot of challenges with my inner critic. I was feeling a lot of um, creative blocks. I wasn't able to really, you know, show up authentically in my work because I was really thinking all the time about what, how it was going to be perceived, what it, whether I was going to get into the next show with this piece, whether the teacher I was showing the work to, you know, when I was in school was going to like it. It was so much about the external and so disconnected from the internal. And that's where creativity comes from, is from our internal connection you know to ourself and to source and so I really had to get a, uh, an awareness around that and get a handle on that and that's where this whole journey began for me was through my own process of trying to uh, understand what was going on and, and I write about this a little bit in some blog posts but I had these really you know these two conflicting places within myself like I really wanted to create this art it was like I dreamed of it my whole life. Like this is, this is my passion. And yet I was so stuck and challenged and, you know, how could those two things coexist? And that was really the big question that I was trying to unpack and understand what was going on for me, you know, that I would be want this on one hand so passionately. And on the other hand, I was so terrified, you know, to do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you were able to work through that. I mean, you've got yeah. extraordinary art. So talk about that. What's the, what's, yeah. Talk. Well, the, I think the, the, for me, um, it was a journey inwards. It was like really about um, connecting to myself a lot through journal writing and, and creating a sketchbook creativity journal, which is one of the offerings that I have for my clients um, because it was deepening the relationship to myself, to really understanding um, who I was what my fears were, um, and then questioning those fears. You know, is that, is that a real fear? Or is that some narrative and some story that somehow developed, you know, in my life through some experience or some message that I may have received? And was it really true? And it, it's, it was, so, so questioning was the big part of it. Questioning and exploring and, and recognizing that curiosity was really important. I had to be very curious and I had to always be willing um, to explore that curiosity even further. So in art making, that's, that's a really essential uh, piece um, in order for us to kind of grow in our work and to have freshness and aliveness in our work and even emotional content in our work we have to be willing to step off that ledge into something that we have no idea. We have to be willing to risk greatly <laughs> and sacrifice everything in our work for the betterment of the whole work. And so much of the time I found myself invested in results, outcome, um, the need for, I need that, you know, that piece back for what I was putting in. I don't know if that makes sense what I'm saying, but yeah. So, so there was a lot of that, you know, uh, coming to understand and recognize what was going on. And then, you know, to be honest, I needed a push. I needed some help. So I ended up, you know, I was working with an artist. Um, many of you probably know Nicholas Wilton, who was a mentor for me. And uh, through my connection with him, he really reflected back to me how much I wasn't willing to be seen. <laughs> and at the time, I remember I had a Pinterest page where I was collecting work that in inspired me. A lot of us use Pinterest for that. And I wasn't even using it to show my own work or under my own name because I didn't even want people to know what I was interested in. That's how deep it went, you know, the sort of um, feeling of just not wanting people to have any idea of who I was. And so he asked me about that. He was really curious about that, you know, and, and really brought that into my awareness. And so it was a really powerful understanding. And I guess that, you know, one of the things that, that, also arose was that I really had a desire to serve others. Um, I had some counseling experience. I had been counseled, you know, in my life. I had the benefits of counseling. It really actually uh, transformed my life. And so I wanted to give that back to others. I, I really had a passion for helping other people. So I trained as a counselor and I volunteered 13 hours or sorry, 300 hours at a, a center 
where I live and spent a lot of time working in that area. And I thought it was an avenue that I would, you know, go in, but then there was the art. So these two things were both calling me. But what I recognized is that the coaching, you know, became a wonderful uh, marriage of those two interests and that I could be of service and that everything that I do can be of service to others. And it took it away from it being about me. It took it away from my self-consciousness and that feeling of, oh, this is about me. Look at what I've done. Look at my marketing. Look at my art. Look at me. And it was more about, you know, I want to have my art play a service role in the world. I want others to feel an experience with it and to have it bring quality to their life. You know, it was a whole reframe, a whole different way of thinking that helped me to kind of step out of that, you know, feeling of it's all about me. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And, and so working with uh, Nick, you eventually became one of the coaches there, right? Like That's you, right. you started helping other artists with their creativity process. Mm -hmm. and you became known in that community as, as uh, someone who can help people get unstuck in, in those ways. And then, and then now you're, you're seeing that it's time for you to bring that work out to, to a larger audience. So, Yeah, and this is a fairly recent um, trans transition, and I think you know, that life kind of goes like that. We sort of transition in layers and mm. when we're ready. And, um, but yeah, Nick um, started an online program teaching his wonderful program, the Creative Visionary Program, and he needed some support, some, some of his mentorship students to come in and help. Uh, because it was a lot of, he was very successful with his first launch. So he had a lot of signups and um, he's been done doing workshops for years. So he's really well recognized. So we, a few of us jumped on board to help teach the material and we quickly recognized that there was a huge need for coaching. You know, it wasn't just about the techniques of learning art that was really important, but there was a huge emotional content piece for people that was coming up right away. That was really clear. And, and Nick, teaches about this as well, but it came up very early in the process. It was a really important piece to start working with was people's fears, limiting beliefs, um, the, 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 the limits they put on their desires for themselves, um, all the challenges that they faced as they were, you know, wanting so much to bring the best quality of their art and find their authentic voice, you know, find that connection to themselves and really make their art their own. Well, they would say, well, who am I? You know, who, I don't even know who I am, or I don't know that I can, or, you know, they'd have all these reasons why it wouldn't work. So our job was to really be there and help them to understand about limiting beliefs and about, you know, the way that we can work with those and shift those. And um, just to spend some time kind of unpacking the creative process, you know, what comes up as you start to create. And one of the things I realized quite quickly um, in that work is that fear and resistance is a big part of the creative process. Self-doubt is a big part. And for some of us, it's more intense than others, you know. So my uh, coaching really focuses on that particular aspect of the mindset. And so if you're a person that experiences that kind of thing, and that was me, that is me, <laughs> you know, I'm still working with it, that ends up, you know, having a fear-based mindset kind of get in the way of what it is that you're wanting to create for yourself. Well, that's something that can be changed you know that's something you can work with and it doesn't have to be a limitation and that was a really powerful understanding for a lot of people and normalizing it and contextualizing it and recognizing that it is part of the process and to expect that it might not be there ever um, is something that is actually even scarier because then it's like you're you're having i don't know if this makes sense but you're having to um you're having to make a, a, a decision that maybe fear will never be there for you. And if, that, if that's not true, then what, what does that say about you, right? If, and so that's a, that was another piece for me in the sense that I had to acknowledge that fear and resistance and self-doubt were there, but I didn't have to give it meaning. It didn't have to mean that I wasn't good enough or that I had more challenges than others or you know that i was going to fail at everything i did it, i just had to shift the way i engaged with it um, and recognize that it's a normal part of the process and when it arrives i recognize it really quickly i bring my mindfulness to it and then i let it just drift away you know i just let it move away 
and it will get activated at different times. It's getting quite activated right now as I'm beginning to build this business and start working on content. So I'm going through this whole same process with this business as I went through, as I go through with my art. So it's really been fascinating for me to kind mm. of see that. Yeah. I would love for you to talk about the, the program, the artist mindset, your online 12 week program that you, where people step through the process of, mm -hmm. well, meeting with the fear and resistance, what to do about that, and then coming through to the other side with their creativity. So tell, tell us about the 12 week program. <clears throat> well, thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. Um, it's a 12 week program that I, um, based it on my work with my individual clients. So I have been working as a creativity coach just alongside with Nick's programs. I was doing my own coaching one-on-one, -on -one, but not didn't have a lot of space for clients, but I developed a 12 week program that I would work with them, taking them through a process of self-discovery and uh, understanding. So I had a series of exercises I would give them each week that were uh, developed to sort of provoke <laughs> <laughs> what needs to come up. And so they could experience in a safe environment, uh, you know, with someone that is there to guide and assist them, what comes forward in that process. So they're not alone, isolated in their studio. They're there, you know. So the online program is just a way for me to do the same thing, but with a larger audience, but also to build community so that they can experience the fact that there is other people, other artists, other creatives that are going through the same challenges and they can self-support and offer, you know, their own insights and wisdom to each other. Because I learn so much from the people that I coach because everybody has their own unique way of engaging with their creative process, right? We all have a creative cycle. We have different areas where we get stuck. Certain things will trigger me, but they don't trigger another creative or artist. So that shared learning enriches it, I think, so much more than even just the one-on-one -on -one work that I do. But I plan to be, you know, very involved in the 12-week program and, you know, doing some live calls and some live coaching so that people can get the benefit of the key kind of questions that we can ask that are going to help you really access the deeper truths, you know, that are underneath. And then just to go through the motions of trying, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone, proving to yourself that you can, you know, and that it's going to be okay. And learning about, you know, um, how to let go of attachment, how to recognize when you're getting too invested too soon. You know, there's a lot of things uh, as artists that we have to be aware of so that we can make our best work and so that we can really take risks and discover and play and create and bring that really alive energy into our art making which is what we want to do yeah i love that i love that you're creating community around this because i can imagine artists usually often as you know painters like yourself i mean you're working in your own, own studio by yourself and it's um it's hard to yeah it's it's like those fears and those that inner voices. You think that's it. That's, that's, that's the truth, right? It's inside yeah. your head. But then if you get in community with others who are also creating art and meeting their, their resistance and, you know, coming, coming to the other side, it's really powerful to see, to see that other people are doing it. And so can you. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And to share your success, et cetera. So I love this idea. I hope people will check it out. If you're an artist or creative, uh, you're doing some kind of creative project check out Cheryl's program, um, The Artist's Mindset. Uh, I'll put a link in the notes of the video. Um, I know it's, the, um, it's just gonna be launched actually as of this recording, it's still uh, in process of being launched. So people yes. can go to your website, they join your email newsletter, they get your PDF, the creative, uh, how to create your creativity journal, and then they'll get access to, to the program when it's ready. Um, That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, great. And anything else you want to say before we close the call? Um, well, I just wanted to say that, you know, um, just to speak to you, George, because one of the reasons, um, and this is another big piece of this, is that I, you know, the idea of marketing myself, putting myself out there, being on camera, um, and I hope I've done an okay job today because I'm already like, I can hear the self-doubt voices going off in my head. So, you know, paying attention to that. But it's, uh, it was really, you know, finding you, uh, online on Facebook and hearing you speak about authentic marketing really resonated with me. And I really needed to find a way to do this that felt aligned with my values and, and my belief system. And so that 
was really a gift, you know, like to come across you because there's a lot of information out there and I've certainly been exposed to a lot of it. And part of that was, uh, I wasn't feeling, it wasn't feeling like a yes for me. It was feeling like, Oh God, do I have, is that how I have to do it? You know? So it, you know, your approach was so inspiring and it really has been great to work with you to get, to get clear on about that content delivery piece being again about service you know to others and just to be able to share that and feel that it's coming from that heart-centered place you know that's been really powerful for me and has really helped me to move along um and 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 to do what's uncomfortable yeah because i have that way of you know so thank you for that and and you know working with you is um, and listening to all of the, the information that you provide, all the content that you provide free, you know, available to us online has been so helpful, I'm sure, for so many people. So I just wanted mm-hmm. to thank you for that and acknowledge, you know, what a great help it's been for me moving myself mm-hmm. along. <laughs> towards Appreciate this. that. Appreciate that. Well, I hope that this interview, this video is encouraging to everyone who's watching this. A uh, lot of creatives uh, out there watching this. So thank you, uh, Cheryl, for your work. And for those who are watching, if you, um, you know, felt connected to, uh, to what Cheryl was saying, reach out to her, check out her website. She has some wonderful writings on Facebook, actually, for Insight Creative, which, again, the link will be in the, um, that talks about this process of creativity and, and the artist mindset. So thank you, Cheryl, for your work. Thank you, George. More to come. I'm just getting started. So lots sure. more in- and lots more to come for these people that might be interested. So thank you for the support and for giving me this opportunity to share. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome.